Thank you for joining us today for 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Hannah Langer, who's completing her master's in architecture at North Dakota State University. We invited her here today to speak about her research and the completion of artifacts in preparation of her defense. Hannah's artifact, Three-Person Amnesia Machine, is a critique of technology as it relates to memory and creativity. Her machine is a dysfunctional ready-made that harkens back to the science of imaginary solutions known as pedophysics to help illuminate how we are forgetting and how we might remember. My name is Anthony Ferris, and this is 10 Minutes with the Artist. Hannah, thank you so very much for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. So your work integrates uh, algorithms um, into its design. Um, that's something that you're sort of considering. Does the machine that you've created also integrate algorithms? Yes, and uh, they're both applied in a sort of different way than we're used to understanding algorithms. Um, most of the time when they're applied, it's in a sort of computer science or mathematical way. And I'm taking uh, a linguistic approach. So um, going back to a conceptual uh, view of algorithms as like a step-by-step -step process in the way it's like uh, language it can be used to construct one. Um, and so in the description of my building program, my building itself, and the artifact, um, algorithms are a core um, in the way they're described. Okay. There's a, um, there's a routine to the way that the machine works. Uh, there's like sort of steps that you have to take in order to actually make it work. So how does creativity or improvisation uh, fit into that idea of something that is pretty strictly routine? Um, it's pretty specified um, in that the mechanical process uh, is direct in some of the positions for the operators. Um, and not direct in others. And the person that sort of sketches on the ribbon itself, um, that's the focus point for the creativity and the improvisation. And uh, that was to show a very, very important dependency upon uh, human interpretation of what's written on the ribbons. Well, two thirds of them, the characters, I mean, you have three characters, one that is cranking, one person that's trying to keep it uh, in order, and then one person who's actually using creativity. Um, what do those proportions sort of speak to when you're thinking about uh, the concept that you're working? Um, to me, they sort of uh, represented a, a gradient in a process, whereas one is completely mechanized um, and uh, it's a straightforward task, the cranking, because it's the same motion over and over. Um, whereas when you move toward the middle, the person unbinding the ribbon, um, they have something to accomplish, but how they have to accomplish it is um, dependent upon the when it's running and the person who who's doing it. Um, and then the interpreter, it's completely up to them, whatever they make. Um, so from one side to another, there's a varying contrast. Is there a need for those three specific people? Are it going to be done with two or one person? The way the machine is set up right now, it has to have at least three people. I haven't tried it with more, but um, for me, uh, having three people and that specific number was important. Okay. The, uh, the machine speaks to a time um, that sort of I, I recognize as like uh, Marcel Duchamp or Alfred Jerry. Um, is this something from the, the past or is it something that's futuristic or um, a contemporary in a way that maybe I'm missing? 
Um, I would say that it's contemporary in the way it's applied to architecture and a design process. Um, I would, stylistically, I don't think it's um, futuristic in the conventional sense, but uh, all of the pieces are from um, modern uh, pieces of furniture, so the style hints there um, sort of give it an age, but I wouldn't put a certain time to the piece. Okay. Um, the the furniture sort of feels like like a ready-made in a way, um, and the site that you're looking at um, is, I mean, like you're creating architecture specifically for a site, site-specific work. Um, is there a connection between that idea of a ready-made and something that uh, has its own history, and then that idea of the site? Yeah, um, with uh, an example of Marcel Duchamp's bicycle wheel, for instance, he took um, part of a bike and stuck it on top of a stool. Um, and so he took an existing object um, or something built and then sort of put his own conceptual um, imprint on it. And so I'm kind of doing the same with my uh, art architecture um, in that I might not be adding on to the building directly, but I'm uh, adding a second piece to the site as a whole to make a holistic statement and critique. Okay. Um, there's this element, and it's, it's sort of funny and it's sort of mundane, um, but you talk about, uh, uh, you have instructions on the specifications of the machine. You know, like how many maybe cycles per second it can do. And it's something that you'd maybe see in an instruction manual that maybe you would never read. Um, but it's mundane, but it's also like sort of enlightening. Um, what does, what's, what does that, what is, what's, what, what does that mean? Like what is going on there? Um, so the way that came about was in the way I studied um, pataphysics and the way Alfred Jari wrote about um, the, the science that he rebelled against. Um, he took this super, super serious approach um, that was absurd. So he made his own science, and because it was so, he took it so seriously, it worked. Um, and so I was thinking about creating that hyper-validation for my machine in the way it has very specific um, notes about it, uh, like you would see in a manual. Uh, that was part of uh, where that came from. Um, and then I sort of linguistically tweaked it so that you wouldn't see it as a direct, like, this pumps out this much to do this much. Um, and so that in and of itself was an exploration into uh, a sort of pataphysical algorithm. Okay, I love that. Um, at the end of our conversation, we'd like to ask a few questions about your creative practice. So what day of the, uh, what time of the day do you feel like you're most creative? Night. Okay. Just when it's dark out. Yeah. Um, uh, do you listen to any sort of music or the radio when you're working? Yeah, uh, mostly my music, but it depends on what I'm working on. Um, if, it, if I'm writing, it's classical. If I'm just uh, drafting or something, I'll just jam out to indie music or something. Okay. Um, is there anything that you're reading right now? Um, I'm currently working through Octavio Paz's book, Marcel Duchamp, Appearance Strip Bear, um, because that piece is really, really dense in and of itself, and so another person's analysis of it is very helpful. All right. Um, what do you think of the most challenging thing is about working in the medium that you're working in? Uh, the medium, do you mean architecture? Mm -hmm. Oh. Or you could uh, talk about the artifact. Um, and for archite architecture specifically, it's tough because um, when you're doing something sort of theoretical and speculative, uh, architecture can be almost anything. And so when it's so broad in general, y it's hard to be very, very specific in what you're creating. Uh, and then with the artifact, 
it's you have to take a playful mindset and it, that's not always, always easy. Hmm. So how do you know that you're finished with the piece? You don't, you just know you're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and if you had to work in a, a different medium than maybe architecture, what do you think that would be? Um, I think writing. Uh, I've come to be more comfortable um, in terms of expressing um, how I'm designing and what I'm designing um, through writing. So I think that would be my best bet. Okay. And then I guess my last question would be, what's next for you? Uh, work for a couple years and then probably another master's. Okay. We'll see. All right. Well, I would like to uh, thank our guest, Hannah. I'd also like to thank you all for your time and your interest in the professional practice and the creative explorations happening here at North Dakota State University. So thank you. And for everyone here at the Memorial Union Gallery, keep creative. Mm -hmm.